So last time when we left off, we had uh, an app that, sort of, that looked like this. You had your, your action bar on top, you had your action bar on the bottom, and you had some buttons on the bottom. By the end of this video, I'm going to show you how to uh, create tabs at the top. They're going to have vector images attached to them. And when you click the tabs, they'll navigate to different fragments. So that our app is starting to look more and more like Instagram. First thing I want to do is fix a mistake that I made in the last video. I set the background to white, but I definitely did not need to do that. You can just go into, or not in the manifest, uh, go into styles, and you can change, you can change it so that it says um, light, so light, no action bar. And that will change the style just like as if I was to change it to no action bar and then set the background color to white. So that just makes it easier. So what we're going to be doing now is going to be very similar to what I did in my tab tutorial. So in this one, I created tabs at the top when you navigated to them, it just brought you to a new fragment. So I'm going to be doing essentially the exact same thing here, but we're going to be setting images at the top, like, uh, like you saw up here. So if you want to follow, actually, actually, I would suggest you follow along because it's going to be a little different. Because there's an app bar at the top and an app bar at the bottom, the view window in the middle gets a little tricky. So there's going to be a little, little finagling we're going to have to do, but it uh, should be no problem. So let's let's start by just creating all the layouts. Just get it all done. So we'll create all of our fragment layouts. So we'll go fragment one layout, and I'm just gonna paste it in. You can go to my GitHub and get this if you want from the uh, from the tab tutorial that I mentioned here. You can go down to uh, GitHub and I put my source code there. So if you want to get the layout, just head down there. You can get that. But um, this one's actually gonna be slightly different, but it's essentially the same thing. So just go and grab the layouts. And now I'm going to copy that and paste it and call it fragment two. And then I'm just going to change, change a few things, change that to two, that to a two, that to a two, and that would be fine. Whoops. And now paste the next one and do the same thing. Three, three, and three. And we're done there. Now let's create the, uh, the the tab fragments themselves. So once again, I'm going to be just copying this from my GitHub. So head down to my GitHub if you want this code. But uh, this one's going to be tab one fragment. And I'm just going to paste it in. Nothing special here. It just uh, sets the fragment layout and uh, set, assigns a button at, for an on click listener and prints out a toast. Really nothing special at all. Now I'm just going to copy that and paste it and do it uh, two more times. So there's tab two. The only thing we're going to change is that right there. So it references the correct layout. I'll we'll change the tag, even though we don't use the tag. That's just for completion. And now let's paste the third fragment. And we'll go fragment three. And for completion's sake, we'll go uh, fragment three. OK, so that's done. Now, just like I did in the tab tutorial, we're going to be using a fragment pager adapter to manage our fragments. And um, if you watched my previous video, or one of my previous videos, on fragments, it's, I think it's just called fragments, we use a fragment state pager adapter. And so in this one we're using a fragment pager adapter. The reason we're using a fragment pager adapter is right here. The fragment of each page the user visits will be kept in memory, though its view hierarchy may be destroyed when it's not visible. So basically it just keeps the fragment in memory instead of getting rid of it like with uh, a fragment state pager adapter. But if you want more information on this, check out the developer website. Basically, all I'm going to take from this is this little section right here, the section that extends the fragment pager adapter. So we can see it just needs two override methods to work and a constructor, and that's it. I'm going to create one extra method for adding the fragments to a list and managing them, but that's about it. So if you want more information on that, check out my tab tutorial or uh, take a look at the developer website. So let's create that class. We'll go uh, sections, pager, adapter. I'm going to be pretty much literally copying this off of my GitHub. But so far, I think this video is probably only around four to five minutes. So I'll just type it out. We've got to extend our fragment pager adapter. And you can see this red here is telling us that we're not doing something right. So we go to implement methods and we can see, like I said, we, all we need is the get item and get count override methods and it will be happy. But it's still red because it wants the default constructor. So we'll create that too. 
and there we go. So the only difference with this one as compared to the one that's already on my GitHub with the tab tutorial is we're actually only going to need uh, one list. In the, we, in the other one, I created a fragment list and I created a fragment title list, but we're not going to use the fragment title list. So let's create a new array list. And this is, oops, let me return fragment list dot size. Why is that angry? Oh, let's get item. Whoops. This belongs down here. And this one is get position. So we're just returning the item at the position and returning the count, so the size. And then I'm going to declare one more method here, and this is just going to be um, so that we can add the fragments to our sections page right after. So I'm going to call it public void add fragment. And make sure it's public or you won't be able to reference it for main activity. And it's going to take a fragment and it's going to just add it to the fragment list. That's it. And make sure that you're using the support v4 library. That's the newest one, so that's the one we're going to use. And we are done in the sections page adapter. So now I guess let's go into activity main. And this is going to be actually, actually, no, let's get main activity done because it's going to be easier. This, once again, is going to be very, very similar to what I have on my GitHub page for the uh, tab tutorial. So we just create our sections pager adapter, and then we create our uh, view pager object. Pager, and we go down into on create, and we declare our sections pager adapter. Go get support fragment manager, and then we declare our view pager object. So view pager, oops, find view by ID, our ID. Dot, I didn't name this yet, but I'm just going to call it view pager. It's not in the layout yet. Actually, no, I'm going to call it container to be consistent because that's what I did in the other one. Then we uh, call a method called uh, setup view pager. Can't type and pass the view pager, and then I'm going to declare the tab layout. And this I also haven't um, attached to an ID yet. I'm going to call it tabs, and then I go tab layout setup with view pager. Pass the view pager, and let's make let's make this method create method and we're going to go sections pager adapter okay, new sections pager adapter just before like before and then we need to add our fragments to the sections pager adapter so we go new tab one fragment in this case and then we're just going to copy that two more times and but i'm going to add tab two and tab three and then the view pager dot set adapter adapter so at this point, we've literally done nothing different in terms of main activity and the sections page adapter other than the titles. But here is where we're going to have to do something different because we need to we need to set those images. And it's actually really easy. So if you want to set images to the tabs, you just go get tab at index. So I'm going to use index one to start set icon and then reference the resource that you want to set to that tab. But I actually didn't import any yet. So let's quickly do that. Gonna grab some more uh, vector. Let's go that one, sure. Assignment. And let's grab that one. And one more. Okay, so now I got three new ones in there. So now all I have to do is just go, I named one IC underscore assignment. So just set it to the image. And that's, or set it to the vector. And that's literally all you do. So I'm gonna copy that two more times. I'm gonna change the index. And this one was, uh, what was it? Renew, I think. IC auto renew. And this one was IC attach file. That's it. So now these images will actually display in the tabs. It's that simple. But now we have to do the hard part. We got to go into activity main. And we got to figure out how we're going to do this. 
and I'll, I'll show you why it's, um, it's going to be a problem. So if I go and try to create a view pager object, just like you would normally do, and go ID, ID is container. So this is exactly what we did in my tab tutorial. We just had, we had an action bar and then below it we had the view pager, which was totally fine. But as you can see here, the view pager, because I'm clicked on it, it's taking up the entire view window. So if I, if I actually run this, it's gonna look, it won't be right. So we can see the, the view pager actually sits on the back of the page and the action bars are sitting in front of it. So it's, it's blocking some of the view. To fix that, it's gonna require, little, it's gonna be a little tricky, but, um, and it's gonna look confusing in this layout file, but just, um, I'll break it down into parts so it's, so it's easy. Basically what we're gonna do is I'm gonna create one line, relative layout, and then inside that relative layout, I'm gonna have three separate relative layouts. One relative layout for the top bar, one relative layout for the middle section, and one relative layout for the bottom. And then I'm gonna stack them one on top of each other. So the first thing we need to do is create that first, that first parent relative layout. This one's, gonna, this one's gonna encapsulate the entire screen. So I'm gonna give it an ID, I'm gonna call it, uh, just call it rel layout. And then inside this, I'm gonna get, put this all down at the bottom just so it's out of the way. And so inside this relative layout, we're gonna have three other relative layouts, like I said. The one for the top, the one for the middle, and the one for the bottom. So we'll go uh, relative layout, match parent, and I'm gonna just set a width here. So I know that my action bar, is, I know I want my action bar to be 50 dp, so I'm just gonna set it to 50 dp. Uh, I'll give, actually what I'll do is I'll give these IDs, I'll give them IDs that make sense. So this one will be uh, rel layout top bar. And then I'll copy this. And this one is gonna be relative layout uh, middle. Actually, I'll do bottom bar. bar. So bot, bot, bar. And to get this onto the bottom, we can just do align parent, uh, align parent end. Should be align parent bottom. Yeah, align parent bottom. Align parent bottom. And see, there we go. So it's now uh, the bars at the bottom. This bar's at the top. Actually, I could probably do align parent top on this one. Align parent top, even though it's at the top already. Let's just let's just do it for completion's sake. So we have our two bars now. We have one for the bottom, one for the top. So now, now we just need one for the middle. So I'll copy this relative layout one more time and let's tab that in. And this one's gonna be the middle one. So we'll do relative layout uh, middle. Okay, and we can get rid of this aligned parent and we're gonna replace it with below. So this is gonna be below our relative layout top bar and the height is going to be match parent. We'll set it so that it's above relative layout, layout bottom bar. So there we go, now it sits nicely in the middle of the two bars. Um, yeah, so that should, be, that should be good actually. So here's our top, here's our middle, and here's our bottom. And then this relative layout is the one that encapsulates all of them. So now I just need to take what we wrote before and put it into the respective relative layout. So this was the top bar. Sorry, this was the top bar. So let's grab that. We'll cut it. Go up to the top and we'll stick it into our our top relative layout here, just like that. And now we'll go down and we're going to grab our view pager. And this is what's going to be in the middle. So we grab our middle. There's our relative layout middle paste that in, so that's good. Now we're gonna grab our bottom. So we go all the way down to the bottom of the app bar and throw it in there. So there we go. Now we have our three layouts. We have the, uh, we have the app bar at the top, we have our relative layout with our view pager in the middle, and we have our relative layout with the other bar at the bottom. So it looks confusing, I know, it's a lot of XML. Just give it a shot, I'm sure it'll work out for you. So now that we're, we're actually done in main activity and we're done, we're done everywhere. So now our container error went away and it's finally time to run it. All right, so it looks like everything's good. Click on tab two, click on tab three, click the button. That's wrong, probably because I forgot to change it. I forgot to change it in the fragment, I'm guessing, yep. So that's three and that needs to be 
two. That should be good now, though. Close that, close that. All right, bring it back up. So click on button one, we get button click one. Go over to tab two, and we click button two, we get button two. And tab three, click button three, and we get button three. So our app is starting to look a lot more like Instagram. We have our, our tabs at the top, we have our buttons, our image vector buttons at the bottom, and we have a middle section that uh, can get swapped out from clicking on the various uh, fragments. Of course, there's nothing attached to these vectors yet, and I haven't decided on whether I'm going to continue with this uh, kind of Instagram tutorial, I guess I'll say. So uh, leave, leave some comments in the sections below, and if it helped you, leave a like. Follow me on Twitter for notifications when new tutorials are posted. Subscribe if you haven't already, and thanks for watching.